after nung ginawa nila ni Mayor saka, at sa kanila do, I mean, it's, it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Pero nagising ako. Pero actually, effective yun, no? Imagine if the mayor's doing that in a barangay, <laughs> demonstrating the importance <laughs> of maternal care. Eh, mapag-uusapan yan. Either matalo siya or matalo sa sa election. <laughs> Pero it's nice kasi it's, it's very interesting na bit at bit. Sa lahat ng marami ng icebreakers, energizers, at recaps na pagdaanan ko, I think that one was like... <laughs> This is for the books. Nobody can follow, can, can, can follow that. See? So, uh, I know that you're all dying to go. Because I know that when you go back home, you're raring to go back to work. Hopefully, that's yun your motivation kung bakit atat na atat na tayong umuwi. Uh, but these are going to be last inputs kasi later on, action planning na. And we, we are expecting that since day one, actually even since module one, hanggang the last input session, yan po ay lalabas na sa action plan. And this is no ordinary action plan, but this is a rapid action plan. Diba? I mean, we do rapid action plans in, in PHOs and DOH, right? Especially in the last remaining months of the year, after our program implementation review. Diba? At the middle of the year, kasi we review our programs, and then we look back, and then check ano pa yung what are the remaining gaps and challenges? Same, same thing here as well. Because this is a rapid action plan. And we, in a sense, we are working in an environment that we don't have time left. Especially for this specific class, where you have your graduation six months from now. And it's no ordinary graduation. It's going to be a colloquium where you do your own public narrative and, 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 and retell your story of successes and perhaps challenges that still remain, but hopefully the challenges are quite few, okay? So, sabi nga po ni Wes, now that we have perhaps addressed some technical and adaptive uh, uh, gaps on the supply side, ito kasing lumalabas for the past few days, di po ba? Sa inyo mismo gumagaling to. Kung bakit, bakit kaya uh, medyo nahihirapan pa rin tayo on how to improve the health indicators ng ating bayan. And then sabi nyo, minsan kasi lumalabas ito, yung poor health-seeking behaviors. So, uh, eh, kaya ngayon yung pag-uusapan natin before we do your inputs action planning. Siguro we are in an agreement that this is important. Right? Why do we need to do this? I mean, I don't have to re-emphasize why the need because you yourselves uh, verbalize this. Pero, let me just review this. Is, is this familiar? Have you encountered this slide before? Di po ba this is our triangle of accountability? Wherein, for us to have, let's say, for specifically for health, for us to have better health outcomes, these three sectors, di po ba, should really work hand in hand. And it's not just working hand in hand each sector is actually accountable for the health outcome. So the state, in a sense, the government, the political leaders, so uh, other than the mayor, lahat na po dun, no? policy makers, plus LGU natin is usually the mayors, the sangkunian, di ba? And even the barangays, kasama po dyan, barangay kapitan natin. Tapos, of course, your provider, in this case, kasi health yung ating ano, field, yung health care provider. Kasama na po dun yung nasa central, which means the rural health office. Kasama na rin po dyan yung frontline natin. Specifically, your barangay health workers. So, kailangan din po yun. Okay? And then, obviously, the last leg of the triad of accountability, yung nakakalitan minsan, are also our clients. In this case, our community. Di po ba? Kasi, for the last three days, at least, ito yung focus natin, kayo. Tama? We trained you, we were teaching you principles, we were teaching you theories. Kayo po. And during your practicum, you were working on with them. Tama? So, try it to. If, yung isang leg dyan ay tatanggalin, we don't expect a good health outcome. 
And obvious yun, di ba? I mean, it's really obvious. And you yourselves can attest to your own experiences back home. You, you even made mention of examples a few days ago. So, ito lang po yung focus natin bakit po ginagawa natin yung session na to because we wanna address especially this side, the demand side. Okay. So, speaking of demand side, yun na nga po. You will, the last six months or even the last few years of your service in the LGU, you've been addressing the supply side. Di po ba? Kahapon nga po, nandyan tayo, nandun tayo kay Vice President Binay because he wanted to address and well, ask his help in addressing this side. Di po ba? Facilities, services, enhancement of personnel, commodities. So we were expecting sana that, at, well, at this stage of our relationship, na-address na po to somehow. Although may, may konti pang pagkukulang, but at least majority of this side has already been addressed. On our end, kami po sa CFF, katulong ng University of Makati, ito yung ina-address namin. Tama? A health leadership and support group. And to some extent, you are also addressing this when you go to your barangays trying to empower your own barangay capitans. So you're also addressing this when you are expanding your local health board, when you are including your department heads in the in the endeavors for health. Ginagawa po ninyo rin to, yung health leadership and support group. Okay? So you, you are working on this, you have been working on this, supposed to be, we should also be working on this part. Now the demand side yung kliyente natin, mga pasyente natin, health-seeking behavior. Kasi if you're only addressing health leadership and supply side, wala yun. Di po ba? It, it won't give us the outcomes that we expect. Kulang. It's not optimum. Purus white elephant yung projects natin. Empty facilities, empty... Nothing. It's not utilized. Okay? Also, if we're only addressing supply and demand, but we're not address, addressing leadership, ganun din. I, I, I don't see any output that will come out. Di po ba? Kasi if kompleto yung facilities nyo, mabubuti naman yung mga health-seeking behaviors, if what, pero walang political leadership, this won't run. Di po ba? This won't run. Wala yan. So, useless din. Also, if you're addressing leadership and addressing health-seeking behaviors, but we're not also giving or providing the technical aspect, pag-frustrate din tayo dito. Tama? So, nakikita niyo yung relationship ng tatlo. It's an all or none principle. We can't just work on one side or two corners of this triangle. It has to be three. So in module two, you know, I from good to better. Now we should have a grasp of this. Tapatatloyan. So when we let's say analyze our projects or programs, we we'll always think. So what's the supply side? Are we ready? Do we have the supplies? And then how can we address the demand side? You know, palagi question. And then of course. The leadership is there and we're helping you. And we want you at the end of your of your training, not just to be any any ordinary leader, but a specific kind of leader that is the bridging leader. Ito ba? Yun yung brand natin dito. You're not just any kind of leader, you're a bridging leader. A bridging leader who masters himself, who owns the problem, okay, and who shares this vision with others for co-ownership. And together with others, you co-create. So yun yung bridging leadership natin. Okay? So yun yung brand that we want you to be, a bridging leader. Okay. So since we're trying to address the demand side, which is actually very tough, madali naman pa tayo ng clinic, di ba? Program of works, budget, hindi kay vice president, yun na yun, papatayo na tayo. It's very easy to buy equipments. Beating lang tayo, get a list of what we want, and then that's it. We pay for it, and then we, we deliver it to us, that's it, fine. 
The demand side is quite difficult. Would you agree? Because it's so complex because it's dealing with what? Behavior. Can we buy behavior? <laughs> Can we build behavior through? As simple as building a facility. It's not. Because it's no ordinary behavior. It's human behavior at that. Okay lang to pag animals. <laughs> diba? Animal behavior, it's okay. We can just herd them all. Diba? Like cattle. And just lead them all, tie them up, and bring them here to our facilities. But this is human behavior. Who, uh, 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 you, uh, 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 a complex organism, a complex being, with many, many dimensions. So, Behavior, ano sabi dito, or how an individual interacts with his environment is influenced by his beliefs and values. Would you agree? Just take a look at yourself first, the way you behave. As a person, regardless of being whether you're mayor now or doctor now, the way you act now is influenced by your own set of beliefs and values. Remember your story of self when we ask you to think of a personal challenge that, that you encountered a long ago, and then you were asked to choose, diba? what was your choice? And then how did you choose? Diba you chose based on your values, on what you believe is right, and what you believe is important. Like, I chose to na makipagsapalaran Kasi my, I, I value ambition, I value a better life for my family. That's why I chose to be in this position. Right? I, I value education. That is why I chose to live a life like a working student, drive myself hard to earn education. So the choices that you make that led you here is influenced by your beliefs and values. So, merong example dyan. For example, you believe is paniniwala. Yung value is yung kahalagahan sa isang bagay. Di ba? And there are two different things. Okay? There are two different things. So, for example, belief, like in this case, paniniwala ko, ang hindi ako pinapansin ng mayor ko. Hindi ako pinapakalis ng RHU kasi no training opportunities. You know? So, I'm not receiving adequate job training. Yun yung paniniwala ko. Pero yung, ka, yung value nun is for me is para sa akin kasi mahalaga yung career growth. Parang gano'n. So, with the conflict in belief and values, that creates an attitude. Ay, mahirap pala maging isang MHO. Ayaw ko na dito. Walang kamukausap sa akin. Kinakalaban ako ng mga staff ko. Di ba ba? Yung gano'n. Because you value, let's say, I value my job, I value my responsibility, and then the belief comes in that, ay, hindi nila ako gusto. Bakit kaya? So the attitude form here could be, but in this example, medyo negative yung nag-form na attitude, I don't like my job anymore. Ayaw ko na dito, marami akong kalaban. Kahit ano nang punta ko nang punta sa barangay nila, hindi pa nila ako tinatanggap. May mga issues pa rin against me as mayor. Kahit na yung intention ko is pure, aalis na lang ako. <laughs> diba? I won't stay here. In the five days, I'll just stay here for a day or two. Aalis ako, baala kayo dyan. Meron may, ganun, hindi eh. ba na pro-frustrated? Tao rin tayo, di ba? So, yun. And that would influence your behavior. So, anong sasabihin mong behavior? Ay, Mayor, magre-resign na lang ako. Aalis na ako. Magpa-private practice. Ay, or, ah, bahala kayo dyan, ayaw ko yung tulungan. Hindi nyo ako kinakampihan, bahala kayo dyan. Parang gano'n. So, behavior. So, can you see the interrelationships dito? How beliefs and values influence attitudes and behavior. So, do a little self-reflection. Can you recall a, a, a moment or an experience in your life that you can trace this kind of relationship? of beliefs to behavior. Try to see in yourself, no? 
the things that you have done, the, the choices that you have made, and what were the values that were taught to you. And try to even look back way up to your childhood. Para sa iba siguro, it's a long way back. <laughs> Next, iba, lingon lang na konti. Iba? The choices that you make now, who you are now, the way you behave now. Like, strict to ako sa office. Kasi nung bata ako, strict to din si mama, si papa. And we value discipline sa bahay. So yung attitude ko is, dapat mahigpit din ako sa staff ko. So behavior, dapat maaga. Diba? Yan yun, yun, yung relationship. So baka, yun yung nangyayari. So, I'm not saying beliefs and values are, your beliefs and values are good or bad. It's really up to you to decide. But the thing is, we are in agreement that behaviors are values in action. Tama? People know your values through your behavior. Pag nakikita nila si mayor or si doktor, palaging galit. Siguro nagme-menopause na to. <laughs> o siguro ganyan, ganyan. Di ba ba? Or si doktora naman, palaging ano to, uh, stricto sa hatian ng reimbursement. Di ba? Yung ganang issues sa kaming between midwives and doctors, nagkaroon ko yun ng issue ganyan. Di ba? I mean, money can really ruin relationships, I know. Being an MSO. Di ba meron ganun? So, bakit stricto yun yung ano to? So, ano nangyayari? Baka, importante sa kanya yung economic security. Ayun, ganun yung values. It gets reflected. Baka may pinupunta na itong bagong bahay na bibilhin. Ayun, ganun yung values. It gets reflected. Eh. Even among your, um, even just observe among your midwives. Or, or your staff. Or your, your staff. Bakit, bakit pa si budget makikisaw-saw pa sa reimbursement? Diba yung ganun? Diba yung ganun? Bakit, bakit ba? They behave, and, and they're so adamant. Diba ganun? So, but what is the value speaking here? What is the value or the belief being manifested here? Diba? Bakit ayos pumunta doon ni Mayor sa barangay na yun? Ah, ganun. Diba? So now that you know this, when you go back, you tend to be now more conscious about that the LHP kayo. Diyo nung the LHP, nung mainit na yung pinag-uusapan, just try to be quiet and look back and observe how people behave. And then at the back of your mind, try to role play it. Bakit kaya yung sinasabi niya? Bakit ganun yung attitude niya? Ano kaya yung belief at values? Where is this person coming from? Pahalaga yun. Kasi, if we want to change behavior, we have to change the value system and the belief system. Tama? Because it's basically the belief and the values taking in action form. Diba? And what's difficult is, it took years to form these values. It wasn't formed over a day. Your values were formed since you were young. And experience by experience, you tend to mold your values. Remember your leadership lifeline? If you look back in every rise and in every fall, a value is being learned. And without you knowing it, it gets incorporated in you. And unconsciously, you manifest that value. The way you behave, the way you interact with people. That's why it's very hard to address health-seeking behaviors, behaviors, because you're basically addressing values and beliefs that are so ingrained already, formed through many years, and here you are, challenged by ZFF, to change that in the next six months. Tawa? It's so challenging. And I can't really relate kasi we've all been through that, di ba? Yourself nga lang, eh. trying to change who you are is difficult. How much more changing people? But the thing is, kaya nga may, we're, we're always dealing with personal mastery sa course na to, with ownership. Because if you cannot master yourself, how can you change people? Tama? Now you see the value why we're doing the, that framework. Because you have to be the leader of yourself first. 
Tama? In, in Filipino, ito yun, di ba? But yung picture kanina kasi is more western. This is Filipino. Yung sabi ko nga, the experiences that have been piled up so many years that gets ingrained in influences. Yung katauhan, yung pagkatao, and gets ingrained in the within, the loob, the will that drives you to take kilos. Which is different from gawa. Gawa is more of routine. Buta ko ng office, punch in, pupusal this, secretary, mayor, papers, and God's stacks of paper. Routine. But kilos is something different. It's an action with purpose. Okay? It's an action with purpose. It's a purposive. You know? But it's really very important. Remember theory you? It's very important to change behaviors. Right? Would you agree? Especially if it's a, it's a, a poor health-seeking behavior. See? So from this, remember this? You know, sensing. It's a transformative process. From your current to the preferred. Okay? So, how is behavior developed? Like in that picture. So, like I said, experiences, information that you have encountered will affect the formation of your personality and your character. So again, remember your leadership story, your leadership lifeline. What were those experiences that formed your personality? Who you are now? That formed your character? If you consider yourself a strong-willed person, what were those experiences back that formed your strong character? If you consider yourself submissive and shy, what were those experiences that formed your personality and character? And it has, sabi nga dito, it has more impact on the character. On the character. So all processes na yun, malay, awareness, dama, isip, it will form your core, your within, your loob. Okay? And the loob, like I said, is the basis for kilos, which is meaningful action, very different from gawa, no? or just a simple activity. So, now that you have that, now that we have established that, that behaviors pala are just values in action, beliefs in action. How will we therefore influence behavior, especially among our amongst our clients? Okay, how do we influence behavior now? So, if I ask you, will we ask you to bring cases of deaths? Tama? Uh, sino po yung nagdala ng maternal death? A maternal case, death case. Wala. Walang maternal death? Meron. Lahat. So, it's okay. Maternal death muna. Sino yung nagdala ng, ng yung pinipit nilang case is a maternal death case? Meron si doktora. That's okay. That's okay. Regardless of the year. But maternal death. Kasi we ask you only to bring one case. Diba? Either it's a maternal infant or child. Sino yung nagdala ng infant? Okay, may infant dito. May child ba? Child. Okay. So we're going to divide you into two groups. We're going to divide you into Luzon and Visayas. Tama? May Mindanao ba dito? Wala. Lahat po either Luzon or Visayas. Luzon is a Romblon group and a Ilocos group. And Bicol, Ragay, Kamkamsur. Tama? So yun yung three group, yun yung members of those groups. Uh, of, that, of that group. There are, of course, Visayas will be Samar, Leyte, and Capiz. Okay? So, uh, for the Luzon group, yung ragay, ano pong dinala ng ragay? Na case? Dami. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I have to be worried. <laughs> Dami palang case. Actually, past yun. Two, kaya. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kanina, sinasabi pa ng mga doktor, ayaw na namin i-report, makapagalitan kami. No, 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 
Because we already did a review, right? May magandang case kayo doon ng isang child. Okay, child. So, uh, Visayas uh, Luzon Group will discuss a child death case that will be presented by Ragay. Okay? Child. Child. Yung Visayas, ano po yung dala nyo doon? Child death. Sino pa yung sa Visayas? Child death. Okay. Alam naman natin yung kwento. Ay, wala. Oh, pero... That's okay, that's okay. Uh, child din sa inyo, no? May maternal. Pero sa anong group nga kayo to? Luzon kayo. Sa Visayas meron din. Maternal. So, can we, can we have that maternal case? Kailan po yun nangyari? Tagal na kasi kayo walang maternal deaths, right? 2009, that's okay. You still have data. You still know your story. Alam mo, di ba? I mean, you know it by heart. Kasi alam mo yung kaso. Exactly. So, yes. so, this is what we'll do. Luzon Group will discuss a child death case that will be presented by Ragay. Uh, Visayas Group will, will discuss a maternal case that will be presented by uh, Llorente. Okay? So, paano po, how will we present this? So, yun nga, you'll be divided, small groups. First, your one case, that will be the focal point of discussion, which means kung sino po yung case holder will also be the facilitator of the group that will facilitate the discussion. Maybe the mayor or the MHO of the, of the case. Okay? So, three rounds po of discussion. The first 10 minutes will be basically the reporting of the case. But again, it's not just reporting, it's a narrative. I'm more, I'm more concerned of the story behind the numbers. Which, what, which we usually do in our reviews. You know, diba? That's how we conduct our, our mortality reviews. Uh, Ragai, uh, we already conducted one, so they know how, how we do it. Uh, Llorente, you know how to do it naman, how to do reviews, because we do reviews. So it's more than just, of course we need the facts, we need the data, we need... Uh, how old is the patient, uh, how did she die, how did he die, what was the clinical, and all, all that stuff, you know how to do that, right? But it's basically a narrative, a 10-minute narrative of that, of that patient's story, okay? So it has to be, it has to be very, you know, detailed, okay? It has to be very detailed, as detailed as possible. 10 minutes yun, eh? which means, Oh, that's fine. Okay, infant. For as long as it's not maternal, so we'll so have two unique cases. Do you have an interesting infant case? I don't know. When did it happen? Last year? Okay, February 9, 2012. Ah, this? Oh, very recent. Okay, very good. Then we'll use that recent case. Okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> so that's fine, that's fine. The, the, the reason, I think it's better para fresh pa yung story sa inyo. Because maganda nga kasi you're doing investigation and you do case investigation, di ba? Because we gave you the forms. Do you want to have a Christmas to the beginning of the doctor? Yeah, well, whatever. That's why it's part of the investigation. Uh, and, 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 and bear my term, uh, investigation. Because when you investigate, the purpose of investigation is to find out who did it. When we do reviews, to find out what happened and how do we prevent. Diba yun yung difference between we review. And uh, we don't use the term anymore audit or death investigations. Diba? The new term now in the OH is review. Because. Yun, yun, yeah. Review na, di ba? Kasi matang mga status audit is just a, just a list of the of, of diagnosis, di ba? Exactly. Facts, data, statistics. Pero yung doktor, may sakit na dyan. O yun, ayun na. Mayor, wala pa tayo. Mag-denivide pa tayo. So first round, 10 minutes. Reporting is basically narrative. Second round is 20 minutes. Doon lang po tayo mag-clarify. 
So please, in the next 10 minutes, the facilitator ensures that report muna. The rest, makikinig lang. And maybe while listening, you're taking notes. Ano man yun? Oh, what's not clear? Then 20 minutes, clarificatory. So facilitator, ensure that everybody gets a chance to clarify, make clarificatory questions. Parang ganun. In, 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 the, legal, in the legal sense, no? The third round would be, okay, after everything has been clarified, 20 minutes, proposal of strategies. Okay? We'll give you also a Manila paper, and this is the questions to be answered. So we'll give you a Manila paper, write your answers in to these three questions. What was the behavior that required change? And what is the proposed alternative behavior, Sana? Okay? Second is, what were the determinants of that behavior? Why was that behavior manifested? And of course, strategy to improve that health-seeking behavior and explain. Is it clear? 